Now with all the things that we have seen we are able to create the clip for this gun. So let's go ahead and press edit with tab so we can edit this object. And normally what we would do is that we start selecting this vertice and we push it up. But if you rotate you will notice that we are only selecting the vertice that it's in front. And if you use B to select the two vertices, we can select them. Well, there are two options for that, and one is pressing Z, which will allow you to see in a wireframe mode. And as you can see, there are several viewport shadings. One for material, which is black, because we don't have a light and we don't have any material. One for texture, it's also white, because we don't have any texture. And one for renderer. And we can switch between the solid and the wireframe by pressing Z, which is really great. But there is an even better option for us to select the vertices that are in the back, which is this button right here that we need to turn on. And as soon as you turn on, you will notice that we can see through the cube and actually visualize the vertices and the edges behind. So let's leave that on and let's go back to front orthogonal view. And now we can select these four vertices because we are also selecting the vertices in the back and push them in Z, a little bit up, like this. Okay, that's great. Let's push those vertices on the bottom until we get more or less the length of our clip, like this. As you can see, this is straight and we need to create a curve, which means that we need to cut this cube in half. And for that, we can use Ctrl R and this pink line will appear at the center of our object. And if you scroll up and down, you can add more or less cuts. For now, let's add three cuts. And as soon as you press mouse 1, these pink lines turn to orange lines. We can move them up or down. And if you press escape, they will stay at the center. Now we can go ahead and select the vertices at the bottom and drag them in the X like this. Let's also select these vertices right here and push them a little bit down. And remember that we can press Z to see through our cube, which will allow us to see the image in the background. And now let's push those vertices to this position, right here. And that's basically it, we have created our low poly clip. And now let's actually go back to object mode with tab and let's select the main frame. And as you can see, if we enter in edit mode, now we can select these vertices right here and push them in the X like this. And let's go ahead and also press Ctrl R to cut this cube in the mid. And as soon as you press mouse one, now you can drag this line to wherever you want. And I'm gonna drag it to right here and then I press mouse one again. Let's add another one right here and another one between these two vertical cuts, just like this. Now let's select these six vertices. Let's push them a bit up and we can cut again so we can push up like this. Now we can cut again like this and push a little bit up. I'm gonna cut again and this time we are going to do something different. If I was to do like this, like I'm doing right now, it would create this artifact. It wouldn't be great. It isn't a good practice. And what we want to do is switch to faces with Ctrl Tab. And now let's select this bottom face like this. And we can extrude with E and push in Z like this. And extruding faces, it's actually really, really useful as you can see. And now we have a better geometry and it looks much better than before. Now let's scale it in the Y, so we can press S and Y, like this. Okay, this should be enough. And now let's go back to front orthogonal view with one. Let's press Z to view in preview. And with Ctrl R, we can cut this in the middle. And let's switch to vertex with Ctrl tab and push this vertice right here and this one to this place right here. And as you may have noticed, I'm always using B to select. Okay, this is starting to look like something. Now let's create another object and as you may notice sometimes your cursor, your origin is somewhere else, which is the case right now. And uh, you can select the clip or the main frame and press Shift S so we can select cursor to select it. And now basically if you press Shift A to create a cube, this cube will appear right in the middle of our clip and it will be aligned with everything we have made. Let's push it right here, because now we are going to do the handler. So let's rename it to handler or something that you will remember. Now as you may notice, we need to align these. 
and if we align this with G and then moving only in Z, it wouldn't be perfect. And there is a perfect way to align things, which is very important to use. And as you may notice, we have this magnet icon down here. And if you turn it on, it will snap to the grid. Okay, that's cool. Now, what if we could snap our object to other vertices? So, let's turn off again this magnet icon. And there is a shortcut, in case you want to know, which is Shift Tab. Shift Tab will turn on and turn off the snap mode. And we can choose to snap between volume, face, edges, vertex. And we want to select vertices. And there is also a shortcut for this, in case you want to know, which is Ctrl Shift Tab. And I'm going to select vertex. I recommend to use shortcuts, by the way. And let's turn off the magnet because I want to show you how to snap things without having the snap always on. Let's press G to move and press Z to lock in the Z axis. And now if you hold control, you will notice that our cube will try to snap to the closest vertex of our mouse cursor, just like this. And then you can press mouse click one. And as you may notice, this is perfectly aligned with our main frame. Now, we can do the same thing, but let's switch to faces with Ctrl Tab. And now in the Y axis, let's align this to our main frame again by holding Ctrl like this. And let's do it again in this side so we can align this face to that vertex. Basically, we can align everything we want to the nearest vertex we point, which is really great, by the way. Let's push this face in the X like this. And let's push this in the Z. Okay, we can cut this in middle and align with that and extrude this face like this, with E. Now let's cut again in the middle with Ctrl R. Let's select vertex and push this four vertices down here. Okay, that's great. Now we can cut in the middle vertically like this with Ctrl R. And let's again select faces with Ctrl Tab, push this face a little bit down, extrude with E like this, and move this in the X. And we are almost done with our handler. I'm gonna push this a little bit up, and I'm going to use E again to extrude. Now I'm going to switch to vertices, select these four vertices and push a little bit up, just like this. Now with faces selected, I'm going to extrude again and push this vertex around here. And that's it, we have done our handler. Of course, we are not going into too much detail because this is your first object and we don't want to make it too complex. Now let's go to the right view, tree in the numpad, and scale this down until we fit those white lines that we see right here, just like this. And now as you can see, this is too thin. So what we can do is enter in edit mode with the faces selected select these upper faces and scale only in the Y axis, just like this. Okay, that's great. Now let's cut this again in the middle, like this. And let's extrude this face, rotate it a little bit, extrude again, extrude, rotate it, until we have this shape. Now, if you want to make this face with zero degrees, what you can do is press S to scale it and lock to the Z axis and then press zero. And this face now will be with a rotation of zero, basically. Yeah, it's a little trick right here for you. And now I'm gonna push this up and align with this vertice. And just push these four vertices right here, just like this. That's it, we have done our handler. Now let's select our main frame, press Shift S and select cursor to select it. Because we are going with Shift A to create a cylinder this time. And don't move the cylinder, because in this panel right here to the left, we can control how many vertices the cylinder has and if you move you will lose this panel. So let's set the amount of vertices to 6. Okay, now let's scale this down, basically, because we are going to make the handler for the hand. And let's place it right here. Let's scale it a little bit up in Z. Enter in edit mode and with the face select, 
with control tab we can push this face up and with control shift tab we can set the snap element to vertex and while we move this up we can hold control and go to the nearest vertex so it snaps basically to the same position in Z. Okay, that's cool. Now let's cut this in middle. Press control R and let's cut again. Let's scale this down. And that's it. We have done the handler for the hands. Now let's create a cylinder right here for the muzzle with shift A. Let's scale it down with S. Let's rotate it with R, press Y, and we can enter minus 90 degrees with the numpad. Push these vertices right here, align them with the other vertices with control. And now we can scale basically only in two axes by excluding one. If you press S and then you press Shift Z, as you can see, it will only scale in the Y and in the X axis. And if I press S and then I press Shift X, it will exclude the X axis and only scale in the Y and Z axis. And this is really useful. Now if you go back to our front orthogonal view with one in numpad, we can press S and then we can press Shift X to exclude the X axis and only scale in the Z and in the Y axis. Just like this. Okay, now that we have our muzzle done, let's rename it. Now let's do the trigger. We can select the handler and press Shift S so we can select cursor to select it. Which will allow us to press Shift A to create a cube. Let's scale it down with S. Let's place it here and scale it down a bit more. Now let's enter in edit mode with tab. Let's push the bottom vertex to around here and with Ctrl R, let's cut this in the middle. You can push this vertex to right here. And now we basically start creating the shape of the trigger. And that's it. We have done the trigger. And let's just scale it a little bit down in the Y axis like this. Okay, that's it. We are done. Let's rename it to trigger. And now let's select the demo clip. Press Shift S to select cursor to select it. And now we can create a cube. Place it right here, scale it until it fits the white lines, enter in edit mode and push these four vertices up and hold control to snap to the nearest vertice. And now let's basically just select this vertice and push it down like this and the other one like this. Okay cool, now let's just scale it down in the Y. And now let's go ahead and select the main frame. Press Shift S and select cursor to select it. So we can add a cube to create the rear sight. Let's place it right here. Scale it down with S. I'm gonna push in the X axis and with control I'm gonna make it snap to this vertex like this. Now let's enter in edit mode. And with faces selected, let's extrude with E this face right here. And then let's switch to vertices and select this top vertices like this, push them down and that's it, it's done. Now what we need is to scale it down in the Y axis. Okay, cool, and move it in the Y axis and snap it to this vertex with control. Just like this. And now, if you want to duplicate this object, you can do it with Shift D. In the Y axis, you can press Y and then hold control to snap to that vertex. And that's it, it's pretty much done. Now let's just add a little cube in the middle, like this, and we are done with our low poly SMG9. And I believe this was a really cool exercise for you to get started with modeling. Now the next cool stuff that we have to do is UV unwrap. And it's use it so we can apply textures to our model. And we are going to see that in the next tutorial. You can find that video in the description or in my channel. So that's it, thanks for watching guys, and see you in the next tutorial. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, and if you can, support me on my Patreon page. Thanks guys.